Why is carbon important to your plants and soil health? Learn more from Glenn Rabenberg in the SoilWorks episode focused on correcting the cause of imbalanced carbon to nitrogen ratios. It is always cheaper to correct the cause than react to the symptom. This is the SoilWorks Correct the Cause podcast featuring Glenn Rabenberg and brought to you by SoilWorks and Acres USA. Welcome to the ninth episode in the SoilWorks Correct the Cause series. In the eighth episode, we went through the topic of biological farming and some of the things that you need to make sure those systems work. In this episode, we are going to talk about carbon's role in the soil and the appropriate ratios you need in your soil. So our goal today will be to help you understand more about soil carbon and how to balance the carbon in your soil. Uh, Glenn, you ready for this? Hey, I'm glad to be here. Let's get to it, man. All right, Glenn, so the two-part question to start, uh, see if you can get through all this. Um, why is carbon important, and what should the carbon-to-nitrogen ratio be? Wow. That is, uh, carbon is something that people are just starting to read and research and look at. But carbon is the basis of all life on Earth. Carbon comes in many different shapes and forms, and carbon can form more compounds than any of the other elements all combined. So carbon has a lot of flexibility, and carbon is what makes up a majority of the dry matter weight of a plant. Now there's a lot of confusion that uh, when you look at your soil test, that's what is made up of a plant but a plant is made up of or or wants to be made up of 47% carbon and the plant wants to be 43% oxygen. So we're already at 90% of the dry matter weight of the plant and we haven't talked about much of anything. But this carbon to nitrogen ratio is starting to get a lot more conversation And keep in mind who you're listening to or who you're asking the question. Because I was sitting through a university-sponsored soil seminar, and I'd sat there for two hours, and I hadn't heard them say anything about carbon or oxygen. So I asked the question. I said, you guys going to talk about carbon or oxygen at all? And the lead professor leans over, comes over to me, and says, well, he says, you've got to understand that your soil has probably eight or ten tons more carbon than nitrogen in your soil and I said okay that's great but what should it have and he calms down a little bit he goes well according to the microbiologists they say an eight to one carbon to nitrogen will barely keep soil microbes alive but he says I don't know they they look at stuff nobody else can see and We're not sure if we can trust them, but he says if we do trust them, they say a 16 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio, the microbes, the beneficial cooks of the kitchen, the critters of the soil, the good guys in the soil, are now starting to be happy, they're partying, they're reproducing, and they're starting to efficiently do their job at a 16 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Going on down the list, mycorrhizal fungi really won't last very long unless you have at least a 22 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Uh, Mycorrhizal fungi are kind of a house plant. They're kind of pansies, but they like a really nice environment, and you've got to get a lot of microbes uh, giving off CO2 to get that carbon up high enough so the beneficial fungi can be in the soil and uh, perfect compost if you're looking for it is a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio so carbon it's the essence of life but please keep in mind carbon by itself isn't necessarily that important to life and here's my example of that if there's plenty of air and oxygen in the soil microbes will take carbon and they'll take oxygen and they'll give off carbon dioxide, CO2. Well, put these same microbes in a, in a lower air and a lower oxygen environment 
and carbon dioxide can very easily turn into carbon monoxide just by losing one molecule of oxygen. And if it goes even further to an airless environment, carbon without oxygen and applied nitrogen, the carbon and nitrogen without oxygen can now form cyanide. So cy cyanide, did you have a bowl of cyanide this morning, Ryan? Um, I had eggs, and I don't think cyanide is part <laughs> no. of it. No, and, and the sad thing is we have, we have recorded this in fields. So as we look at carbon, it isn't just the carbon, but it's also the ratio of carbon to nitrogen. And please don't forget about carbon to oxygen because the carbon to oxygen ratio needs to be at least one to one in the plant. And here's another kicker. Plants give off oxygen. So when they take in CO2, they keep the, the one carbon, they keep one oxygen, and they've got another oxygen to exhale. Welcome to the carbon cycle, the essence of life, and the way Mother Nature had intended it to be. So carbon is important, but you have to have oxygen with it. And the only place your soil can economically get oxygen is from atmospheric air. And the air that we're breathing right now contains 20%, in fact, a little over 20% oxygen. Thank you, Glenn. A uh, really important topic with this episode. Uh, why is carbon important? It's the essence of life, but it needs partners to uh, excel and to be important, especially air and oxygen. A uh, quick ratio review that Glenn walked us through. Eight to one carbon to nitrogen ratio will barely keep so soil microbes alive. 16 to one will make sure microbes can do their jobs. 22 to one ratio will make sure mycorrhizal fungi are happy and perfect compost is 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. Thank you for listening to the ninth episode in this soil work series. Stay tuned for our final episode, episode 10, which will give you ideas to build your growing operation into a climate change solution. Uh, thanks from SoilWorks, to Len Rabenberg, and everyone here at Acres USA. Find those causes and get them corrected.